They can't save us. It's gone too far. And instead of fixing the problem, they just kept making the problem worse. That's what I know. And I was told, don't do that anymore because we'll kill you. People started playing games and now the game is out of control. The world's never going to be the same. I hope I'm wrong. We're going to go bankrupt. There'll probably be a new conference like the Louvre Accord or the Smithsonian Accord and they're going to rewrite the rules of the game again. They're going to say, okay, the US dollar, you're toast, you know, and IMF's going to jump in, Japan's, China's going to jump in. But meanwhile, you and I, if you're holding dollars, you might be in serious, serious trouble. But he warned me that the world would change and I didn't really understand it at the time. Some of the nasty threats I've got. You better watch out, you know, because I criticize vaccines. And I've studied vaccines. I kind of know what they do. The primary reason va vaccines are so profitable is because when they brought them out, you cannot be sued. The drug big pharma cannot be sued for any failure of the vaccine. So the vaccine kills 10 million people. You know, the drug company, ABC, Big Pharma, i.e. Merck and those guys, they can't be sued. And then what they do is they produce the vaccine and then they get somebody like Trump or Obama to push it. That's what I know. Brian Rose just got yanked from the air because he brought something that was controversial on. That's the freedom of speech. But so is being politically correct. PC is that you violate the First Amendment, the freedom of speech. Another thing that's been violated is the right to assembly. Social distancing and shutting down businesses is a violation of the First Amendment. So our rights are being ripped out of our hands right now. And that disturbs me. So when Brian Rose, a great guy, he got taken off because he criticized you know, LinkedIn and Bill Gates and YouTube and all this stuff. So that's what you got to be careful today because freedom of speech is gone. One of my tweets was New York City going broke. And the reason New York City is going broke is much of the property in New York City is commercial real estate. I own residential real estate, so we're doing pretty good. But on commercial real estate, with everybody zooming away and at home and all this, the question is, who's going to go back to work? Who wants to pay that high price for that commercial real estate? But worst of all, what value is commercial real estate, like an office building, if you don't have workers in it? All cities count on real estate taxes. So what you're going to see in the next few years is real estate taxes on your home. My apartments will go up. But when New York taxes those commercial high-rise buildings, more tenants will leave. So New York City is going broke. You know, the beautiful city of Vancouver, Canada is flat broke. It's just tragic what's happening because you have these incompetent city managers who are just like my poor dad, you know, guys with college degrees, but no common sense, you know what I mean? All the cities now count on taxes, but if a small business is closing and big commercial real estate starts closing, our cities are going broke. You add to that pensions. You know, pensions, mark my words, I wrote my book called Who Stole My Pension? Pensions are going to be the biggest disaster hitting America and the world today. And I was told, don't do that anymore because we'll kill you. My friend who was a doctor says they will. So that's what concerns me. You know, I'm going, I'm, I'm in for the freedom of speech. And I agree that people can disagree. Everybody has their own opinion. But to threaten somebody with death and all that, that's a little too far. People started playing games and now the game is out of control. This Corona crisis, as I call it, you know, it's a smokescreen for something that's been going on for years. The biggest crisis is the financial crisis. And your generation, the millennials, have been screwed. I mean, big time. I mean, if you understand how money is created, money is credit and debt. That's all it is. I mean, credit, debt, and taxes. That's what money really is. But they don't teach you that in school. So today, the reason the world economy is crashing goes all the way back to 71. But what happened in 781, they could just make fake money and they can keep printing fake money. And this is the US dollar. The US can keep printing fake money for a number of years yet. And the only way they could keep the economy expanding, they had to find people stupid enough to get into debt. If a newspaper, and this starts with the Los Angeles Times, New York Times and all, if they say something their advertisers don't do, they get shut down. And so now these big newspapers, 
they are censored by determined by the advertisers. The same as this Dr. Atkins, you know, this carbohydrate revolution and, mm. you know, eat meat and everything I like. Across the world, there's two billion old guys like me who have no money and who's going to bail them out and no Republican or Democrat is going to say we're not going to pay the old guys money. So that means the old guys, they're going to say, you got to bail us out. And so naturally they're going to print more money and pay the old guys just so they get reelected. You know, so it's, it's real estate taxes, it's small businesses going broke, it's income taxes going down and pensions going down. So the Fed has to print more money. So that's why I keep saying buy gold, silver, and Bitcoin, because gold is getting more scarce. So let me explain why gold. So my prediction is gold in one year should be $3,000. So that, that's about $1,000 more than it is today. So in a year, it should be up another thousand. Some people say 2,500 is optimistic. But I'd rather have the price of gold going up than your money going down. So if you're saving money, you know, I'll pray for you tonight because your savings are actually real money. In other words, if you worked for it and you paid the taxes on that money you worked for, that's real legitimate money. Unfortunately, the Fed is printing trillions and they're gonna pay you nothing for your savings. I mean, you know, when I was a kid, I got 15% on my savings. Today, you get nothing. So the Fed is screwing you, that's the term. So I think gold at 3,000 in 2021, not outside the box. Uh, silver, $40. And the reason I like silver is silver is moving faster than gold today. And when I look at the price of gold, the high point was $1,900 approximately. I don't know what, a couple of years ago. But today it's 1,700. So gold is near its all time high. Silver used to be about $49. And today, it's, I think it's 18. So it's about 70% below its all-time high. So silver is the best deal of all. And I think most of you can afford a $20 silver coin. And if you can't, you have deep problems. The reason I like Bitcoin is because what I understand about Bitcoin is that it just had a halving. And a halving means they print less of it. At the same time, Bitcoin is printing less the Fed is printing trillions. Now, you don't need a degree in rocket science to figure that one out. The Fed is making the US dollar or any currency, the yen, the euro, the peso, softer. Bitcoin is getting harder. Gold is getting harder. Silver is getting harder. I don't buy gold, silver, and Bitcoin to get rich. I just hate getting screwed by the Federal Reserve Bank and the Treasury. So if you want to keep saving money and putting it in the stock market, more power to you. But all that paper stuff is printed. And the CEOs of these stock market companies, they did a side deal with the Fed. So the Fed was loaning them billions of dollars for them to jack their stock price up. So the, the stock prices are at this artificial high and all mom and pop are watching their 401ks or IRAs and the stocks are this high. And the Fed keeps printing more money, keeps giving the CEOs indirectly because they can't do it directly. They do it through what's called SRVs, special something vehicle. And they give the CEOs the money and they pop the stock market up. That's why we're in serious trouble. Freedom of speech doesn't mean we have to tell the truth. Mm. You see, just because, mm. you know, when I read a financial from a, from a stock company or for a company and all this, they can lie. In fact, accounting is just not a lie, but one big distortion. You've got to understand how the numbers are making the story look good or making the story look bad. Mm -hmm. So uh, many, many real estate investors, they'll actually take a, what's called a pro forma, which is, you know, BS, blue sky. Well, the people that will get hammered, the, I'm, I'm writing this paper right now. It's taking me four months because it's a tough paper. It's called The Brave New World. And what, hap what this corona crisis represents is we're going into a brave new world. As I said in prophecy, I, I, I said it would come in 2016, but I didn't foresee. I, I started prophecy in 1999, but I didn't foresee quantitative easing and zero interest rates 
I didn't foresee how desperate our leaders are, the Federal Reserve Bank, the Treasury, Wall Street, and even putting students in debt. I cannot believe how desperate people are. Everybody's so desperate because this world, starting from 1971, is so deeply in debt. The world's never going to be the same. I didn't have this as a kid. You know, it's called a credit card. Now, everybody has credit cards, but they never teach you how to use it. But why did they have a credit card? It's because they needed more money. So they keep expanding the economy. They keep finding people stupid enough to just get into debt. So give them credit cards and all this and say, well, you give auto loans. But I think the most dastardly thing for your generation was in 2009 when President Obama uh, went to the banks and said, look, we need to get the students more into debt be under the guise of you need to get a good education. I don't know if you understand money, but there's only 4.5 trillion in base money, M1. There's about 225 trillion in debt. That means it's only 4.5 trillion for 225 trillion in debt. The machine's gonna stop soon. You know, I don't know when, but it's gonna stop. And when it comes to a stop, that's when my gold, silver, and Bitcoin will go through the roof. So going back to 1971, this financial crisis is now showing up. And it's your generation that will inherit a pile of duck doo-doo.